The case of the missing 43 students from the Ayotzinapa Teachers Training College in Mexico has sparked an inspiring movement that has galvanized grassroots activists the world over. The incident calls attention to Mexico's dirty politics, which have caused the deaths of tens of thousands of people since the implementation of the U.S.-financed war on drugs. Yet, while creating a catalyst for ordinary residents to take to the streets and protest over injustice, the events transcurring in Mexico also point to another important phenomenon. Namely, the shamefully biased way in which the flag of human rights is waved by the world's most powerful and influential players. There is one striking example that puts this fact in stark relief. It also involves Latin America and it also involves 43 people. But this time it has to do with a country that is not nearly as sympathetic to US interests. That country is Venezuela. Between February and March of this year, a wave of right-wing violence was unleashed by extremist sectors of Venezuela's conservative opposition. Protesters laid siege to entire cities and everyday citizens were terrorized by political groups linked to organized crime. 43 people died in the protests, the vast majority a result of actions taken by opposition extremists. The international press had a field day with the events that happened in Venezuela. Pop icons, celebrities, NGOs and governments around the world joined in the deafening chorus that succeeded in characterizing Venezuela's right-wing terrorists as freedom-fighting students. The democratically elected government of Nicolas Maduro was routinely savaged by media outlets as carrying out a brutal crackdown on peaceful protests. Turning back to Mexico, the question must be asked. Where is the condemnation emanating from the rich and powerful to denounce Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto over the case of the 43 missing students and Mexico's dirty war? Where's Kevin Spacey, Jared Leto, Madonna, Mark Anthony, Ricky Martin? Where is the U.S. State Department, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Miami Herald? If 43 students were abducted and possibly murdered in Venezuela, it is obvious that there would be a much different international reaction to the situation. Yet we barely hear in the international press more than a measured criticism of President Enrique Peña Nieto, who is a loyal ally of Washington and a vocal advocate of big business. It is for this reason that if the movement for justice in Mexico is to be successful, it must continue to be led by grassroots activists. And it must never rely on the corporate media for sponsorship.